side have themselves first ban first pick and the first ban out is LeBlanc, a champion which actually Froggen pretty much carried with last week. Yeah, and, I, and both Alex and Froggen have been playing LeBlanc throughout the course of the split, has been banned actually against both of these teams as well. Mm. I want to see whether or not Gambit allow Elise through and try to first pick her, or if they're going to deny it from Shook. This is something that we've been seeing doing uh, fairly often. And there's the answer. Yeah, there's the answer. At least taken out there. Mundo going to be taken away as well. And with the fact that Shivana got hit in there, that maybe Warwick doesn't wear, that Darian doesn't want to play so much Warwick. But Mundo is definitely a champion that is in their repertoire. Lee Sin, of course, Diamond. An absolutely amazing Lee Sin throughout the years, to be honest, that he's been on top level. Good, solid ban out of Alliance. And Diamond's actually played that in three out of their six games as well. Yeah. So in terms of the, the picks available for these two teams, the, the, the priorities are still there. You know, you've got Renekton, who could still be picked for the top lane, which Wicked has played a couple of times. Kale is still available as well, which you've seen Alex playing in the past. And I don't think it's something that Froggen really trains to. And you can see with banning out that Vi here, Gambit's sticking to their gun, saying they want to actually target Shook. He's, he's defaulting to that Vi, and it means we may see some non-standard junglers if Kha'Zix doesn't get locked up here. Well, Kassadin was banned out here, and well, what a surprise. Kassadin is banned pretty much the entirety out of here. So, you know, that was that was an expected one, and, and he's obviously every single game we think Kassadin's going to get banned out somewhere along the line. But where does that leave Gambit now for first pick here? Kha'Zix to deny from Shook. If, if they lock this in, it's, it's still very good. This is the trend that every team has gone for. Remove those champions from Shook. But what it means is they're going to give up the likes of a Renekton, the likes of Thresh, maybe even Annie, if you want to see Nif going that route as far as the supports are yeah. concerned. And because we know Edward has been trending to these non-standard supports, if he loses a Thresh or an Annie, it's not the end of the world because, hey, he might play Kennen again. But he needs to get ahead. He cannot afford to fall behind with that sort of oddball pick. And we talked about Kale um, last week in particular where Overpower played it absolutely brilliantly and actually prioritizes a first pick here for Alliance. Also going to be taking that Thresh in there for Nif. Now I want to see whether or not this Kale is going to land in Froggen's hands or if they might do something oddball and maybe throw him in the jungle. You know, we heard the jungle's features and then we're talking about the Spurs Stone changes, how you get your health and mana back, you can sustain more efficiently. And there's a lot of things that uh, you can do with Kale having ability power and attack damage to get mm. that HP and lifesteal back. So we'll see where they go with that one. Also, Shook likes to have those sort of aggressive damage dealing type junglers. So it's the only reason I'm highlighting that. Well, over on Gambit's side, they have Kha'Zix, who, of course, Alex Hitch has already played in the mid lane, played it in their second game against the Copenhagen Wolves, went 11-3-8 and eight on that. So don't be sure just yet that that Kha'Zix is going to go into the jungle for Diamond. This pick, however, or at least what uh, Diamond's hovering over now, Jinx has been the big favorite for Gendra. I talked about in the Players to Watch section that his KDA is far and above best on Jinx than any other champion. 30 kills five deaths and 30 assists. Those are Genja's stats yeah. over the five games that he's played with Jinx. The only other game where he didn't play Jinx was Lucian, and he lost to Fnatic playing that champion. So I really like this combination. The low level damage that Annie offers in lane in conjunction with the level six burst of th the two of them combined, that is great control. And it may also force Alliance to play a bit more defensively and a bit more passively. So new, new Caitlyn being hovered over here by Alliance. Um, they've not actually played this lane up until now. We've seen Nunu Caitlyn coming in a couple of times. Fnatic have done it. Super Hot Crew have done it. Uh, one win, one loss apiece if you look at the combo like that. I wonder if that's what Alliance are thinking of here with the fact that obviously Thresh is in there as well. This would most likely be a jungle Nunu and I seriously hope they don't go with it. The reason being, You've got Annie who's just single burst damage. You've got Kha'Zix who's going to hop over you. There's not a lot of utility that your Absolute Zero is going to offer from what we currently see. And also Jinx's range when she gets a rocket launch out in a queue is going to be very big. So not really going to be mitigated too much by that Absolute Zero. I don't know if I like this pick. It has been picked a number of times throughout the LCS and I'm still not convinced by Nunu in the 2014 season. Yeah. And we'll have to see if I get proved wrong by Alliance. I'll tell you now, it's not going to be Teemo, although it is Gambit after all, so I probably shouldn't eat my words just yet in this one. Uh, flicking over to Malzahar, let's talk about uh, what's maybe more serious in this one. We have the Kha'Zix in there, bottom lane is done, which means that we're looking for a top laner and, and a, a possible mid or jungle, depending on where this Kha'Zix goes. Renekton has to be a consideration there. I think they have to go either maybe the likes of Renekton, maybe even a Shen, because there's so much damage here already for Gambit. If you went for something like a Shen, for that utility, for the ability to defend your teammates, that's great. 
Alternatively, Renekton's a strong one. He wins most of the lane matchups. We're, we're still missing a top laner here for Alliance, and I think if you steal that Renekton away, Wicked's going to be defaulted to maybe a Trundle, or potentially the Renekton. Actually, and maybe it looks like uh, it's going to be Renekton for Wicked this time. Yeah, and as I was saying, Kha'Zix now looking like it will go into late. I mean, we've talked about Eve before, did have the hits, obviously, uh, different missile speed on the hate spike, and obviously her E now um, is, with, is physical, uh, damage. physical damage and not magic damage. So, interested to see how Evelyn does in this one. Trundle, of course, the troll for Darian. Probably couldn't be any better of a story. Definitely not. It's an interesting matchup though, because leaving the Renekton open is a bad matchup for Trundle. Renekton should be able to beat Trundle in the early stages of the game, the opening minutes. So, and you're also giving Wicked a comfort pick, something that he's played in a number of times and had some great success with. The Evelyn, however, the only other player that we've seen doing it is Jankos, and he has made it work. But we'll have to before see before the changes. Before the changes, touche, touche, uh, and we'll have to see how Diamond's going to work with her because in one game, if I recall correctly, it was the game that they lost to the Copenhagen Wolves. This is Rocket. It was because of poor timing on flanks from Jankos that backfired and, and cost them. So a lot of onus is going to be on Diamond to pick the right time to engage. Well, it looks like we are going to be seeing a Malphite coming in for Alliance. Now, they actually played Malphite in the top lane, finished 2-5-4 against the Superheart crew. He built a Trinity Force and people had words with Wicked about that build. I, I remember quite a few conversations where Wicked obviously defending the build that he went and other people saying, no, Wicked, you can't do that. And he said, well, it's a great build, but the question remains there. If we're honest, it's one of two champions that Wicked plays often. Malphite and Renekton, those are the things that we've seen from him. Yes, yeah. he has played Trundle in the past. Yes, he played Shivana twice, but I feel like these are wicked champions. So he should hopefully know how to build. I also like the idea of having heavy initiation and being able, uh, you know, tanky and to follow up with a, a good intervention from Kale. But in general, if Shook is out of position with that absolute zero and the unstoppable force doesn't hit, I don't see the rest of the composition working out as efficiently and comboing as nicely as Gambit's does. Well, we've seen uh, Thresh coming out there as well. Vanda last week was so incredibly good with Thresh. Nifs, I think, got a little way to go to hit that kind of absurd Mad Life style uh, level of ho hook sitting, but you never quite know. And I don't want to be too overly harsh on Nif, but the first time we did see him play Thresh was back in week one, and he was a little off his game. His flays weren't hitting the right targets, his death sentences were not connecting as frequently as we've come to expect from Nip. So we'll see if uh, a couple of weeks of practice and maybe settling his nerves is going to help him out in this game. Well, before we get into the game itself, let's take a look at the vote and see what you guys at home have been thinking over at lollysports.com. Of course, you can still get over there and actually put your vote in. And I can tell you right now, 81% of you voting for Gambit in this one. That is a big number. That is a massive number. And I didn't actually think it was going to be that high. I think considering how much better alliance looked last week. I would have expected that to be a little closer, but you know, we'll have to see. No, not too many people believing in alliance's newfound strength, as it were. Well, Gambit always seemed to turn up when it really matters, but here we go. We are in game. It's Gambit versus alliance. And what, hopefully, what promises to be on paper an absolutely brilliant encounter. We've got Froggen playing Kale here, Alex H playing his Kazix. So much to look at in this game. The one thing I really want to bring up just very quickly, Alliance's composition here with Malphite up top, with Nunu in the jungle, Kale mid, it's not champions we associate with Alliance, so to speak, and it actually rem makes me think of evil geniuses in the States. EG has been putting together these fairly oddball compositions of mix and match champions that are against the grain of what we're used to seeing. And we'll see whether or not this one works out for Alliance. I think there's a lot of pressure on Wicked and Shook to get good ultimates, because if they don't, the immense amount of damage from Gambit is going to be more than enough to clean house. And I'm interested to see how Diamond brings this Evelyn, which he played so much of in the past. Uh, now, obviously, changed a little bit. And he obviously feels... The thing is, if Diamond picks a jungler, generally, he's got confidence in it. I'm going to leave Shen out from last week because I'm still not convinced with that. Uh, but Diamond has brought Eve to the table so, so many times and obviously feels that it still is incredibly, incredibly strong. Right now, both teams set up on that traditional line defense that we've been seeing until those trinkets become active and the wards can start going down. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to give up. The only the only teams that we're seeing make sort of level one plays right now is really Millennium, I think, in the EU LCS. They've consistently tried to roam and rotate and get deep boards and try to steal buffs. At this point in time, Alliance are just looking for an optimal lane setup. You can actually see that with Tabs and Nif 
potentially moving to this middle area of the map, they may consider an invade on the blue or actually go for like a 2v1, which we haven't seen very frequently since the 2014 patch. So that invade is coming down. Nif just walking straight off into the brush. Darian and Diamond both hanging around. We can see that Gambit have already moved to counter this start. They've got their bottom lane over by the blue buff. That will be warded out just to see if Shuk will stay there and contest on that blue, try and get that for himself. He seems to have backed away quite heavily from that, but Alliance have done the same on the top side. I actually feel like neither of these teams anticipated this. Because, you know, neither Gambit nor Alliance actually committed to a steal or committed to taking their own buffs, and you see the junglers have just went, okay, we'll go to the other buff, the red. They weren't anticipating the pressure or the, the invades, and as such, just played it very defensively, backed away. They didn't want to lose objectives or give up kills. And as we've talked about, Alliance have decided to go for that 2v1. I think the Lucian Thresh is afraid of the kill potential of that Jinx Annie lane, and they want to buy Tab some time. It's a lot of damage on Darien. And there's a lot of damage on Darien coming in, already losing half HP. Start. Doran shield as well though, so uh, he's going to have that health regen coming in. Wicked also in a 2v1 at bottom with Edward and Genja, his uh, opponents from that. And we can already see that Diamond is moving in. Look at this, they had that ward down on the blue buff and they're going to make their move. And because they've got the numbers advantage in the bottom half of the map, if Alliance try to challenge for this, the higher member count of Gambit is going to play into their favor. Edward with his stun primed is just running interference getting in Shook's face and really, once again, sticking to the strategy that every team seems to be doing. Focus Shook, try to get him behind. Even though Shook will most likely be able to steal this Gambit blue buff, he's been delayed by a good 30 or 40 seconds in the rest of his jungle in clear time. So, very smart play and they've jumped in on Frog. And they've jumped in on towards Frog, but do they have the damage? Or will they make him flashier from this one? Diamond is running in from the back, Frog, and will flash over, but Alex going to chase in there! There is first blood coming down! And that was a brilliant start for Gambit. And look at this blue buff. It's going to be smited away there in the end and consumed by Shook. Alex just straight up 1v1 Frog and landed every single ability that he needed to. Shook is in a little bit of trouble, takes some damage, but with his consume, he'll be able to heal that back up. And I think Frog and maybe not necessarily expecting the amount of damage that was coming up from Alex. And unfortunately, by running away from the minions, opened him up to that isolation bonus damage, which really just allowed Alex to shut him down. And that is the start that you don't want to give Alex Hitch on a Kha'Zix. As I said, the last time that he played it here in the LCS, 11-3-8 against the Copenhagen Wolves, which was the first win of the season, actually, for Gambit here in 2014. They have now a 700 gold lead, a great start for them. Actually, Darian getting more farm in this 2v1 lane than we see that of Wicked as Diamond again looking towards mid. Knowing that Froggen has no flash available, and if they manage to you know, get him a, a little overextended, they can kill Froggen quite quickly. This is smart play from Diamond. He his solo lanes have got a lot of snowball potential with Kha'Zix and Jinx that they just want to get kills. And once again, Frog has been jumped up. Yeah, going straight into him, but he's able to get away there. He's popping the heal and that speed boost that he gets from it as well, meaning that he can get back to the safety of his tower and trying to put as much damage as he can on towards Alex Hitch there. And Diamond as they push that lane right up underneath his tower. Wicked really not having much fun at this point in that bottom lane. And, and Wicked's really going to struggle in this bottom lane. In terms of the 1v2, Darian on Trundle's actually got a, a slightly superior uh, position there. Trundle's passive gives him 2% of an enemy unit's max HP when it dies, so he's going to be able to sustain a lot higher. And with no armor on Wicked's tower, look how quickly Genja's destroying this one. That's a five and a half minute tower with a couple more auto attacks. Yeah, and actually, there's auto attacks coming in there. Wicked gonna get pulled up by the Flame Chompers, and Genja only needs one more hit now on that bottom tower, and that will be gone. Chuck is nowhere near ready to save that one. We can see that Alliance are coming down. I have to say that throughout the years, Wicked has been one of the more vocal people when it comes to 2v1 in and three men dives onto his tower. It's funny that Alliance should go for this one and leave him at the most vulnerable tower in the game now. Yeah, I, I definitely think they were afraid of the dual lane and then after realizing how much damage their tower has taken and that they've lost a blue buff, Alliance has decided that it's probably smart to try hold onto their tower for as long as they can and that's why they've rotated both Tabs and Nif into the lane. No real advantage has been garnered yet by either uh, Gambit or Alliance as far as the 2v1 swaps are concerned with the exception of Wicked losing it on CS. He's practically half of what Darian's sitting on right now. Yeah, this mid lane frog and actually winning away on that one, obviously able to keep himself at range with that E, which will pretty much constantly be off cooldown as he starts to uh, level that one up into it. Currently 38 to 29 CS there, so it's on about a 10 CS lead. The AD carry is pretty much level at this point, which is 
not what we used to see him from Genji. We talked about the statistics earlier that he's been at the 10 minute, the 20 minute, and overall the lowest CS in the game out of the AD carries. And I think part of the reason for that is because a lot of the enemy duo Q, uh, duos have been shutting him down quite heavily. Here comes Darian. They're going to jump in on Frog, and he doesn't have his flash. Oh, this is bad news for him. There is a pillar coming in. Will use intervention on himself, but surely they're going to dive this one. And there is the kill. Wicked actually TP'd in, though. Darian forced the flash away. Alex Hitch taking two damage, but here comes Diamond. Wicked has to flash away from that one, and that means he has to back away. Shook is coming in. Gambit have had enough here, though. Yeah, they got the kill, and they're going to be able to back away. They also got the teleport down out of Wicked. So if they decide to repeat that process again, no unstoppable force, no TP available and a very good play from Gambit. They are focusing Froggen very, very heavily. That's the third gank from Diamond Prox. This is the burst potential of this bottom lane. That is Tabsu. Had a very tough week one. We were quite vocal about that one, but he set it up in week two and we'll see how that all develops in this one. As Edward there constantly putting down that damage. The Chompers coming in as well, just trying to zone them out. And now that sneaky Evelyn headed down towards this bottom lane. Diamond Prox does not have his ultimate available, so that big AoE slow is not going to be there. And Tabs and Nif do not have their ultimate. They need to wait for a couple more minions here. And if Gambit are able to get six on Genja and Edward, this is going to be a dead duo. You can even see Alex has snuck himself around the back. The moment that duo Q hits six, they wanted to go. And it just was a little too late. Not quite the coordination that Gambit were maybe hoping for. And that one, Shook, has hit level 6 there as well. He does his red buff. Diamond going to be doing the same. Let's just see if we see any challenge for that blue buff this time around. The fact that we've now got duos facing off in the bottom lane makes me think that it's going to be safer this time around for Alliance. Yeah, it's very risky to invade right now. Unless uh, Gambit pulls the help of both Diamond and Gedja in to go for it. It's not going to work up. And you see this. There's, there's not really a lot of vision for either of these teams, actually. There's only one lone ward for Gambit in the river, and it's not giving them a whole lot of information. Nobody's made any moves for a very early dragon just yet. And as I was talking about the Sixers, we see actually Edward is trailing a little bit behind that of Genja. He's got his uh, super mega death rocket available. Oh, and we know that earlier on, Wicked did lose his flash. He had to use that in wow. the middle, and that's a great pillar behind the turret. Alexic dives in there. He is now 3 0 0. And we said it so often last year, you can't let Alex Itch have Kha'Zix, and he's showing again why. And this is a very smart pick, because the Kha'Zix is great at roaming, and Kale somewhat less so. Gambit's playing to their composition strengths. Froggen and Shook trying to take advantage of knowing Alex was away. It's Dragon's going to go low. Diamond doesn't have his ultimate for a couple more seconds. He may try to get some exit frags here when he decides to engage. The rest of Gambit are on the way. Shook's going to die. Here we go, Diamond moving into this one. Shook is down. Dragon picked up by Gambit. Amazing play out of the Russians. There is Froggen being pulled back to safety by the Lantern. But Gambit again, a smash and grab raid onto that Dragon Pit. They get the kill. They get the Dragon. Job done. Back off. If Alliance were going to pull that Dragon off, they need needed Tabs to be there sooner. They didn't have enough combined damage from Nunu and from Kale. And yes, I think it was the smart call, realizing the mid laner was top, but they just simply didn't have the damage required to get him down quickly enough. Diamond hanging on the outskirts of vision range, and now they've gone in on Tabs in there. Oh, Tibber's going down. Tabs falling very low. Of course, the Super Mega Death Rocket was already used in that last battle to secure Genja the kill, but they forced them out of lane, and this is going to mean that that CS lead that Genja has at this point could well be increased even further. Meanwhile, Alex is going back top. Yeah, Wicked's going to be in so much trouble. He can unstoppable away. Yeah, he can, or he can go straight back in onto them. That's going to force Darian to take a lot of damage, but Alex, able to pick up the kill, leaps himself out. 4-0, Alexic. Now, I want to talk about Alex's roam, because he spent more time out of lane than in it. Shook and Froggen are going to try to take this tower down, and Froggen, not necessarily the strongest of roaming wow. mid laners. Shook's going to go down. Shook, oh. uh, intervention coming in, but Alex is actually coming around the side from this one. This could be so dangerous. There goes Alex diving in. He gets the slow onto Froggen, but can they follow through the bottom lane? Not there. Unstoppable force. Uh, not unstoppable force. <laughs> Absolute zero coming out. Diamond now hit. He's ticking away. Froggen picks up the kill and a move that we like to call the Empire used against the former Empire team. No Carthus for this one and they didn't need it. The burst from Kale was enough and we did see Shook with the good positional play on that absolute zero. They're challenging over the wards as Edward kills, uh, Nifs and Nifs kills Gambits. But I think the one thing I really want to touch on is just how little impact Froggen has had in the other lanes. He's building himself up a 20 CS lead. He does have a kill now, but he's not necessarily a roaming mid laner. This is something that we've seen from Froggen uh, fairly often actually. And I think this is smart play from Gambit, realizing that Alliance 
don't play that style of game. Gambit, two on one, they're getting a lot of damage onto this tower. No intervention, of course, here. Darren is going to get to the back of that turret there and try and force them away from it, but with the pressure of shot coming in. Blood Boil, of course, we can't ever underestimate. We talk always about the AD carries, but on Kale as well, it can be ridiculously strong. I actually think for Alliance, Blood Boil should go to Froggen's Kale more than it should go to Tabs' Lucian, because Lucian doesn't necessarily scale off of attack speed. His passive gives him that double shot. He likes to build up a lot of attack damage and use his passive for that burst plus his abilities. If, however, Frog can get all that splash from all that bonus attack speed, that's where Alliance can get a lot of their AoE damage from. Tower did fall in the bottom lane a little, while, a little while ago, and Genja and Edward are now just trying to shove Alliance back, trying to keep Tabs and Nif on the defensive as long as possible. Now let's have a look a little bit down the CS totals here. Mid lane still in favor of Frog and quite heavily with that Kaelin. Well, you probably expected the fact that Alex Itch has spent a lot of time up on that top side of the map, uh, of the map as well, really camping Wicked out. He's had not a fun time, I think we can safely call this one. In that 1v2 lane, being kept out of the CS constantly. When he finally goes into 1v1 in the top lane, he's already used his flash in middle as he TPs in and they just camp him twice, get the kills on him twice. And of course, he's playing a champion that doesn't necessarily pull himself back into the game. When you look at a Malphite who is unable to use his ultimate, you know, hit multiple people, and then continue being a presence in the team fight, you're effectively fighting a man down. So for the, the, the decision making to camp Wicked, shut him down, realize no teleport available, no flash available, and then repeat gank. It's the same thing they did to Froggen in the mid lane. It's just Gambit not making the same mistakes they did against Rocket and playing a passive, reactive team comp. Gambit doesn't play to that style. They're good aggressive. They're good in your face. They're good at finding things to do. See there that Edward having a couple of problems actually with his mouse here and he's got his bag which I hope contains a spare mouse for his sake uh, so that he can get a new one plugged into this one. Looks like he's actually undoing his mouse right now and well that one can maybe go in the bin. New one going to get plugged in and Edward can get back underway. Currently 0, zero 1 on this Annie with Genji who's on one zero zero. They're ahead in CS albeit by 4. But they're doing a great job in this lane. We talked about how key this bottom lane was to them in this game, that they played it safe, that they have given up that first blood in half of the games up until now. Yeah, and I think that there's two things I quickly want to talk on, just in terms of some of the items that we're actually seeing. Trundle up top being played by Darren. He's gone for the, uh, the, the Tiamat build, you know, working his way towards Ravenous Hydra. That's actually not what we've seen other Trundles do. A lot of other Trundles work towards Blade of the Rune King first. And I quite like that because the extra splash damage with his, a lot of attack speed from his W is going to give you very good split pushing and wave clear, which I really like. And something that I had a discussion with Tefishu about seeing if we're going to see Eve in the jungle, which spirit item is somebody going to go for? And Diamond has gone for Spirit of the Elder Lizard. Yep. He's gone for the attack damage item, which was not what we were expecting. We were anticipating still to go the Spectral Wraith, still go like Spectral Wraith, DFG, Sork Shoes. And he's actually going for an AD-centric item. So when we get back into the game and we start looking at how this game progresses, I definitely want to see how uh, Diamond in particular itemizes this new 2014 Evelyn because he's basically the de facto Eve player. Yeah, he is a, an innovator in the jungle. So if anyone's going to change up a build and make it successful, well, you'd probably imagine that it is going to be Diamond. But we are going to get back into game here then. As it seems like Edward's mouse is now... Uh, fixed or replaced as the case was there and he'll be feeling a lot more comfortable and he's moving around the map there so we can see that everything seems to be okay and a second tier map being picked up here for Alex Itch as well. Yeah, you know, the, the Kha'Zix is going Ravenous Hydra as well as also something that has been a little bit more standard these days. Wicked just taking so much poke from Darian, chomping him away and if you look at the item difference with the Tiamat and the, the Merc trades, he's facing off against just a Sheen. Wicked's going for a Triforce Malphite once again. I'm not sure if this is the smart choice. Well, I said it in the pregame, didn't I, that Wicked yep. defended wholeheartedly his decision to go Trinity Force Malphite. Didn't work out for them last time, and up until now at least, I'm not going to call this one over by any stretch of the imagination. It's not looking too great for them. Tabs a little bit far down the lane here against an invisible Evelyn. Yeah, Diamond's going to come in from behind, and Alex is going to catch him most likely. Yeah, there is the ultimate coming in. Flash actually from Tabs will get him to, well, behind the tower, will it? There is a barrier coming out. The Cullin comes in as well. And he had to throw literally everything that he had, barrier, flash, and his ultimate to get away there. I actually think if Diamond had waited a few more seconds, we would have, may have anyway. seen may have seen Alex getting in range. I think, you know, Alex didn't have flash available, but Diamond maybe 
pulling the trigger just a tiny bit early. And of course, because that ultimate's not available, if Diamond wants to go for a steal, it's going to be a little bit riskier. Alex needs to try and come in and support, but I, don't, I think they'll just leave this one for our lines. There's too many members uh, sitting there. Oh, yeah. Niff got it. <laughs> Lovely. Just the sheer presence of Diamond there threw Alliance off. And Nif picked that one up, which not ideal. And maybe again showing a bit of pressure here, Alliance. We talked about them a lot in week one about how you know it came to call in rotations and just general team play that they weren't really up to stand. And that's exactly the kind of thing that can happen. A little bit of uncoordination. Not the end of the world, though, for Alliance. Not the end of the world. And as it stands, Gambit now group up in this mid lane. They've already got the bottom tower down. The mid and the top tower still have that damage reduction from champion auto attacks means they have been standing for quite a while and I actually think Gambit are making a very clear focus on looking for kills as opposed to looking for towers in the map and, and it's, it's sort of working out in some areas. Darren's got a massive CS lead over Wicked but we do see Alex because of his extensive roaming is actually behind that of Frogger. Yeah, he's going to get himself some freebies down on that bottom lane though now. A nice big wave pushed up in that Tabs was trying to hold in the uh, middle of that lane so it wouldn't push back out. Shock in the meantime with his red buff now burning, is looking for some options to round about Dragon, which is in great timing. 14 seconds until that Dragon goes up again. Deficio pointed this out the other week, that people don't like to go through that brush that more often than not actually contains uh, a pink water's Darren, I think, wanted to go for Wicked there, was minion blocked. Yeah, Darren wasn't able to carry on chasing, decided not to flash for it. Instead, he's going to keep Wicked down, force him to get a tower, and most likely then rotate down for the Dragon. If the dragon fight starts out, Wicked does have his teleport available though, so we need to make sure our lines don't group up here, as that could be the only way for Gambit to get caught out. Alex is going to play the flank game, and I think the lines might be caught out here if Gambit decides to go in right now. Oh, if they get them low enough as well and those resets start to come in, that's where the Kha'Zix gets really scary. We see that Dragon is going down low this time though. There is no challenge from Gambit Gaming, and that will be picked up by Alliance. A welcome pick up as well. However, Gambit now got the positional advantage, looking for a bit of damage on mid, but Alliance do manage to get back around in time. Yeah, that was a little strange from Gambit. I think they had the potential to gank quite nicely. You know, every ability was up as far as Eve's ultimate as well as Annie's, and Darian actually was continuing the split push. With this Tiamat in his back pocket, he's got a lot of wave presence that Wicked simply cannot respond to. There's some splash damage from Malphite, but not on the same level of the attack damage and the splash that you can get from that trundle with Tiamat. And once again, Alex, he wants to kill Tabs. I mean, he's basically been camping this bottom lane for the last two minutes, minute and a half, two minutes. He's really looking for another kill. Now we see Pink Ward finally taken away by Diamond, revealed his position just a second ago as he was looking, I think, to join Alexic down in that bottom lane and seeing what they could pick up via Tabs and Nif. Well, Alex is just quite happy to farm that lane out right now. 106 CS, still 30 down on Froggen. But as far as gold is concerned, it only actually equates to about 700 gold total. And he is still sitting on 1400, so we'll see what he decides to pick himself up on his next back. But as it stands, Gambit's still growing this lead. It's 4,000 gold right now. They've got two towers to zero, and they want to steal these blue buffs. The previous one, they applied enough pressure that Nif accidentally took it. And I think Gambit are trying to just force Alliance to defend. See there in the top lane, Darian is having a field day against Wicked right now. Got that Ravenous Hydra finish. You see that how low the turret is at this point. Wicked just cannot compete with him. No, there's nothing that he can do. And of course, Darian, every time Wicked wants to try and fight, Darian's going to sap his attack damage. And if he goes in with his ultimate, going to steal his defensive statistics as well. So Wicked is really never going to win. They catch Shook. Oh, they catch Shook, but he doesn't stand on the Flame Chompers. Meanwhile, in the top lane, we actually see Darian being chased down. But can they lock him up? There's a flash away. His ultimate helping to keep him healthy there. And he goes straight down into middle, where it looks like the tower's going to be taken down. There was. <laughs> an absolute zero, which didn't really do a whole lot to stop this turret pressure. And that will be the, uh, the third of the game being picked up here for Gambit. Yeah, Darian's still sticking around. He probably needs to back away. If Gambit had stuck there, maybe Froggen could have gone in for another kill. But no unstoppable force. It was used in that top lane trade where Alliance were able to at least push Darian away, slow him down a little bit. But now Gambit have got all three outer towers. And they're definitely playing a split push game. They want to now get the top and the bottom towers, and they might go for like Darian split pushing top, Alex split pushing bottom, and the three man sort of hanging around mid where Diamond can roam looking for.
And what diamond? I don't really need that one right now. You keep a hold of it. Get on your jungle path. He's about to hit 100 minions to the 67 of Shuck as well. He is sat at 0 1 1 at this point, but Alex has just seen Shuck coming in there. He was up in the uh, enemy jungle, but saw the couple of them coming down. He decides, I'm going to back off from this one and probably finish himself an item from this one. Obviously, already got that Tiamat in there, got the Brutalizer in there as well, and it is that Ravenous Hydra finished off for him. Yeah, he'd been sitting in that jungle for a very long time, really just waiting to see if anybody was going to overstep their bounds. On the previous pack, he's also picked himself up that sweeping lens trinket this time around. And, you know, as far as the trinkets are concerned, Gambit now with two sweeping lenses, going to try to play the deny the vision game. Diamond is going to come from the side. And this is definitely something that Gambit could tower dive because Darian should be able to just tank that tower for a long time. And the rest of Alliance are going to try to support, but we'll have to see how quickly they can get to this top lane. To be careful of it. Alliance are actually in the top side of their own jungle as well as Wicked trying desperately to hold Darien off. And honestly, with that Trinity Force in there now, he's going to be a little bit stronger to hold Darien away. But I'm not sure how scared Darien really is. And we can see him just roaming through, going to spot himself shot, which he'll do a little bit of damage to. Backs away from it, actually using the uh, active from that Ravenous Hydra as well. Shuck not going too low, though. He's got that red buff in. It's pretty tanky by now. Yeah, he's got a little bit of HP from that Sightstone and the, the Spirit of the, the Ancient Golem. But we're not seeing a lot of impact from this Nunu. I mean, he's used one ultimate. Yes, he got a kill. Blood Boil hasn't helped them push down towers. He hasn't ganked at all. He's only been farming. And he's behind on CS to that of Diamond Prox. He may actually get caught out as Edward and Diamond find Shook. Not sure if Diamond got the damage for this one, it's going to force Shuck away. And oh, there was a super mega death rocket actually being thrown out by Genja. A little bit ambitious there, but we could see shortly that top turret was finally finished off by Darian. He's just been beastly this match so far. And just to continue talking about the Nunu, was finally Alex finds tabs. And but again, forced away underneath the turret, maybe a little bit too far in from that one. Meanwhile, we are going to see Nif going low here. Ignite was down. They finally killed off Darian in the top lane. He's drawn three of them out, though, and this is typical Gambit style. Let Darian bait them into killing him and then take objectives elsewhere on the map. Definitely worth it. Trading your top laner for an inner turret that you can then rotate around, get better control on blue and better control on dragon. I think that is a great call from Gambit. And you know, what does Nunu offer in a tower defense situation? He's got no wave clear. He's got little CC that's hard. Yes, he can run forward and then absolute zero. But if your enemy is already 6,000 gold ahead and can insta give you, it's not a lot. Frogan forced to use that uh, uh, intervention just to save his own life. And I, I'm just wondering to myself, the only way for Gam for Alliance to get back in this is to have better vision and to basically catch Gambit off guard. They need to initiate with the Kale and Malphite combination, find kills and push Gambit out of their half of the map because Gambit's basically been living there for the last five minutes. See that the Giant's belt has now been added into Wicked who did get himself that kill onto Darien earlier, so that certainly uh, helped even out a little bit of that CS in the top lane that is so far behind. Junglers, again, very much in favor for Gambit. Froggen doing a good job, as we kind of expect from Froggen when it comes to farming. He's a 50 CS lead, but Dragon is now up. Gambit have complete control over that one, and our lines aren't going to come anywhere near it. No, they won't be able to challenge. Because of the, the massive item advantage now that is sitting with Gambit, that's their second dragon of the game, I think Alliance are a little bit scared to pick and engage. Diamond now is going to get caught out. He's actually somewhat surrounded by Alliance members, but he's got a lot of support following him up. And you can still see Gambit, they're playing the map this game. And if somebody from Alliance is a little bit out of position, then Gambit can go for kills thanks to the, the damage champions they have. And they've got that pink ward on Baron. They start to close in a little bit towards this top lane, and Diamond going to reveal himself. Are they going to push through from this one? Darian was a little bit further behind. Edward actually watching off to the side by the Tribush to see if he could get Tibbers down onto the head of someone, but Alliance, I think, wisely backing away from this. Not going to get into any kind of fight when they are. Six and a half thousand gold behind now, and we're only 23 minutes in. And you know what I think is very scary for Alliance? Is they need to keep a second eye on Baron at all times. The amount of damage that Gambit's composition has, they can shred through Baron very, very, very quickly. With Kha'Zix's isolation and all the free attack speed stats that Darian's going to get with Trundle and, of course, Jinx, if they focus down Baron super early, it's definitely going to be able to, you know, solidify this massive lead. And you can already see Diamond Frost going with another interesting build. A build what a Cutlass picked up, so he's definitely going for that more attack damage sort of right-click build on Evan. Very interesting to see how that one 
keeps developing. Alex actually, despite that early start to things where he, you know, had really been able to catch people out, obviously he's transitioned more into that split push heavily on this bottom lane right now, not being able to pick up kills in the last couple of minutes, but that may all change because we've got Diamond coming in from the side. There is a dive in, unstoppable force used by Wicked, flash used by him as well, and that will be a light, uh, Gambit probably laughing with happiness from that one. Unstoppable force, flash down, that means that the the hugest part, maybe almost the only part of initiation for Alliance is now gone. Yeah, with the exception of a death sentence, there's nothing else Alliance can do to surprise Gambit now. And, you know, just going back to some of these item builds, if you look at the bottom half of the map, you've got Genja with a fully completed, fully stacked Bloodthirster, the makings of a static shiv. Oh, Shook was very brave to throw that ice ball out. And a BF sword. In comparison to just the Fade Sheen and Bloodthirster, Tabs is quite a far way behind in terms of just outright damage. And it's going to be very difficult for him to make a meaningful impact when he's got so many damage sources that can chase him down. Oh, with five towers down here for Gambit, obviously it's the only, uh, the only inner turret that remains is in that middle lane. That's something that Alliance need to hold on to at all costs here because once that one goes down, they've got nothing left outside of the base. It means that they are far less safe to go anywhere near their own jungle, which you can see they're, they're making sure they're grouped it while they do that one right now. Nif actually moving into the back side of he the could Baron get caught out. Yeah, he may get caught out. Darian coming in, Edward off to the side as well. And there was a scan coming down, not revealing any wards though, sadly enough, uh, for Gamut there. That was Edward just using his. Alliance grouped up as five. Well, they know that without vision, they're always in danger. Yeah, and knowing the strength of Gambit now, we talked about the Baron that they could do and the fact they can kill it very quickly. They can now start playing the baiting game. Deny the visions with the sweeping lenses, catch anybody that you can, and try to secure kills that would lead to the objective. Diamond with those boots of mobility. And his W is <laughs> able to put down a lot of damage and be extremely fast to run away and basically control entire areas of the Alliance jungle. Alex Hitch going back to a single lane on his own and pushing that one out while Frogan here putting down some good damage towards Darian. I think they were edging forward to maybe have a go. Unstoppable Force is now off cooldown. That means that they can fight again, albeit it's still very risky. And that's not the target you want to hit. Even if you get a lot of burst down onto Trundle, he can throw down his W, use the ultimate subject, and regenerate a lot of HP back. Now that Gambit have got a position on this Baron, they've got a ring of vision, and the rest of their team is running interference. They're relying on the single target damage of Kha'Zix and Eve, and Diamond's running low, but I think he should be able to get this before Alliance can get in range. Look at Edward's position there, basically saying, my stun's ready, I've got Tibbers off, uh, on, 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 off cooldown and ready to go. And that's a two-man Baron, so expertly done. The control, phenomenal from Gambit. Gambit didn't even need their whole team. Because of how far ahead and, and the way they've built their champions is just working in their favor. Now they can start sieging. I think Jinx is a very good siege champion. She's got a long range with her, her rocket on the switcheroo on her Q. She can sit fairly safely back. And if anybody starts to initiate, Pillar's gonna throw up his, it, Trundle's gonna throw up his Pillar of Ice. You're gonna put Flame Chompers down and Alliance cannot get over that as a team. Alex and Froggen are about to duel 1v1. Froggen started. Yeah, there is a slow coming down. Alex is actually popping his ultimate, and there is half of Froggen's health gone. He will use the intervention. Alex is going to jump back in into the absolute zero. A little bit too cocky there, Alex. I don't think he expected the damage that they were able to put back. He thought that he was able to finish off Froggen. Not the case, I'm sadly afraid. And that was definitely the combination of that blood boil as well as Kale with her Righteous Fury just slamming down all of those auto attacks. It allows Alliance to pick up their third kill of the game, potentially this tower, but Darian is going to interrupt it. He's not going to let them have it. He's actually defended fairly effectively. He's started a fight now. Oh, and there goes Tibbers down. Flash Tibbers, in fact, and that is a dead Froggen. What a way to turn that one around, losing their mid laner, almost losing the turret and reacting so quickly that they're able to stop that happening and pick up the kill on Frogger. And so importantly, it was within 30 seconds of Dragon respawning. So now Gambit can group up around the Dragon Pit, potentially go for the objective, or maybe even try to set up like a death push as it were. You can see Tabs, he's just going to dash over the wall with that relentless pursuit. And Gambit actually, they've decided they, they're even hungrier. They want the tower instead of the Dragon. Well, Wicked has finally got rid of that tower in the top lane. That is the first of this entire game for Alliance. There's calling use by Tabs just to make sure that wave in mid is cleared, but Diamond has just gone back top, soloed the Dragon, and that turret is already down to half HP. The definite target here for Gambit. 
And the one that Alliance are looking to hold on to at all costs. I absolutely love the Blade of the Rune King that's been picked up by Diamond Prox. Not only have you got these unique forms of CC from everyone except Annie, Flame Chompers, the Pillar, you know, there's a slow on Kha'Zix. You've now got the slow from Eve's ultimate as well as the slow that she can get from Blade of the Rune King, allowing her to duel and split push and once again control the tempo of the map. The rest of Gambit are still sitting in the middle lane, but I think until Diamond gets there, I don't really expect them to start a 4v5. They're ahead, but I don't think they can play that bravely and get away with it. And they can expect Diamond to be hanging around there. Pretty obvious stuff. As you see Alex each move away, this is just textbook split push right there. And he just walks straight in. Diamond quite happy to tank it up. And that is that final inner turret of the game going down. Only the base of Alliance now remains. It is a little easier to defend. So the absolute zero from Nunu becomes a lot more powerful in these tight chokeholds. But once again, Alliance need Gambit to jump on them, then respond with the unstoppable force and the absolute zero. They have caught Darien just a little bit, but they're not going to engage because look at how many members of Gambit can flank. So I, I think that was a wise call from Gambit to walk away, and Darien just life steals off half a minion wave. Easy peasy. Alex going back for the white as well. He's got that blue buff on here. As we now have a 10,000 gold lead in, in place for Gambit. And then pushing the waves up here. That bottom lane is finally starting to push out. Top is actually nicely pushed out as well, but Gambit moving in. Yeah, Gambit were able to push Alliance up through the north to go for the top tower. And there's the tower, the fight! Unstoppable force to the back side of them. And actually good damage coming on to Edward here, but the rest of Alliance taking a lot as well. Intervention comes on towards Wicked, but that is a lot of damage. Shook is super low. He flashes away. The Zap not hitting. And actually, they've repelled this attack at least for now. They're gonna lose the inhibitor and the turret, but that could have ended a lot worse for them with more deaths. So for the first time, we see Alliance's composition working fairly well in a team fight. That absolute zero did actually slow down Genja and Alex from getting to the back line. And the defensive ability there of that intervention saving Alliance. Take a look at the fight. First of all, knocking Genja up in the air and getting basically a full channel off on that absolute zero helps Alliance. But as soon as Genja is able to flash away, nobody could dive onto him. So Alliance immediately are forced to retreat. And I think they're almost a little bit lucky that there was no uh, kill for Genja because if, if she had got excited on that Jinx, would have been able to run down members of Alliance. Unfortunately, Alliance are too far behind. 10k gold down, they had no damage to win the fight. They simply held even and were able to retreat. And that's the scary thing from Alliance's point of view that they did everything right in that fight right there. And they still were only able to take down the support and only were able to just walk away with three members critically low from that. And as you said, it's like one kill coming in and assist for Jinx and that would have been maybe the end of two or three of them and possibly the game. But crucially, they've held on to it and you can never, ever, ever count out a team like this, especially a Nunu with a Baron coming up here in two minutes. That's an opportunity for Gambit to lose out on something big. Now, something we just noticed as well, Genja just back, finished off an Infinity Edge, a Static Shiv, and picked up a Pickaxe. I quickly looked at his gold. He was around, oh, Tabs is in trouble. Alex, oh, actually wisely, realizes Frog is there and backs away. Um, Genja was sitting on 4,000 gold when he backed, which means he had around 3,000 when that fight happened. If Genja had all those additional stats, that fight would have been a lot more in favor of Gambit. Now here's the Blade of the Rune King. Blade of the Rune King coming down. Here comes the troll from the side as well. Pillar going in. Intervention going to be used. Wicked is there as well. But well, Alex now joining the fight from the back. Wicked was a big tank at the front of it. And it looks like he's managed to keep them away. Darien pushes them off as well. But Shook now caught out in his own jungle. Tibbers comes down. It's five on four. And this is going to be defense for our Alliance. This is going to be such a difficult offense. They do have unstoppable force from Wicked. But there is no culling. There is no intervention. So if Gambit group up and shove this bottom lane to try and get another inhibitor, that would be very difficult for Alliance to defend. Darien, he doesn't care. He's just going under the tower with the super minions and pulling members of Gambit with him. Well, look at his items. He's got damage, he's got magic resist, he's got health and armor. He's got everything that he needs right now to just stick at the front of the pack as Alex gonna dive in there. They're not able to finish off Frog and the super mega death rocket actually was thrown through there as well. But that is inhibitor two going down. Darian got hooked, but again, you just can't kill the troll now. No, definitely not. And Subjugate's just come off cooldown. So if Gambit were to stick around, they'd have that big heal, that big tanky stats. 10 seconds on Baron, a minute on Dragon, with two waves of super minions pushing into Alliance base. Gambit should back away, heal, maybe set up wards, and then go for the big objectives before potentially pushing down the top turret. Something we see Gambit do very well, though, is finishing games out once they've got either the Baron or the inhibitors. And two of them, they now have down. And 
Uh, Alex H actually going to get caught out from this one. Is he going to be able to escape from it? The hook not landed onto him, but it's Froggen that finishes off in the end. Now Darian caught out. Wisely, Genja runs north there to try and get out of things. Darian going to flash over and actually get able to escape from that, but it allows Alliance to move towards Baron. I don't think Alliance are going to be able to get away with this one. Genja has still got full health. Diamond has got full health and his Agony's Embrace. If a good Agony's Embrace lands, then Alliance could be in trouble. Shook is taking so much damage. Wicked's teleported in. Gamma to try a challenge. Where is the flash Tibbers from Edward? He's going to be ready for it. And there it is. Gets three men down. The ultimate comes out of Genja from the back. And we see Alliance being ripped to pieces from this one. They're looking to finish off Wicked first. That one will go over on towards Diamond. But Genja chasing in. Slow gun the land. That gets him excited. The play almost from the grave there coming out from Nif. But the kills raining in for Gambit. Three men down for Alliance. The other two super low. And we can see them go back towards Baron, which has been started already by Darian. That was a desperation play from Alliance. And it didn't work out for them. The flash tibbets from Ember. Edward locked up, I think, four members of Alliance and now Shook, he's trying to steal with a potential, you know, smite consume, but it's not going to happen. There's too many members of Gambit around and I think without his flash, he can't, couldn't really surprise him in that situation. Another great fight for Gambit without even having their full team around, but when you've got a 15,000 gold lead, you can afford to make those plays. The mid inhibitor actually did respawn there for Alliance, but because they weren't around, the super minions took it instantly down again. So that leaves these two inhibitors open. Genja is pushing the top lane. Alex Hitch wanted a bit more gold to take home with. He's now got that Black Cleaver Last Whisper along with his Ravenous Hydra. And I'm guessing that it's going to be a Guardian Angel that comes next for him if he gets to that point where he does go home to buy. Yeah, why not? I mean, you've got so much damage you can play. You, you can jump into the entire team come back to life and just carry on wreaking havoc. But what I like about Gambit's uh, gameplay throughout the course of this match is that they've rotated so efficiently. They've only picked fights when they were comfortable for it. They've been pushing for towers, I think, as a first objective, and then fighting if it would allow them to secure a tower. And it's quite reminiscent of Fnatic's play throughout the last couple of weeks, actually. You see a couple of members of Gambit in the mid lane, two of them sitting up in the top lane, and you can see with Diamond Prox inside the base of Alliance, if they want to flank for a tower dive, Diamond's in the perfect position to make it happen. Well, it's Darian at the front there in the top lane that's making sure he just tanks up the turret a couple of times. Gonna have a bit of a troll dance, stomp his feet there on the steps, and he just walks straight in there once again. Flame Chompers are down, and they start to focus in on Wicked. There is Diamond coming from the back. Tabs the focus of this one. He's trying to get away. The inter intervention will certainly help, but he is surely going to go down. Super Mega Death Rocket flew by them. One man is already down here, and Gambit are on towards the Nexus turrets. They're going for Darian. They're throwing everything at him, but Alex Hitch jumps in over the top takes down Nip, they've held them completely out of position and the Nexus turrets have already started falling. Both of them now are down, the Nexus will be disintegrated and Gambit pick up a very strong win against Alliance. Incredibly convincing victory from the get-go. Alex was able to pick up a 1v1 solo kill onto Froggen's tail and it just snowballed from there. He was 4-0 by the time they left that lane.